Welcome to John Gets Games. Today I'll be doing a full playthrough for Nippon. This game plays two to four players, but for this video I'll be doing a three player game. And in this game, it is the industrial revolution for Japan, and you are trying to uh, do the best you can by building factories and getting coal to run those factories and getting money to build and buy all this stuff. It's got a whole bunch of things going on the board, including some area control, but it's all built around a very simple action selection mechanic. So I will explain the game as we are playing it, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Here's the starting setup for our three-player game of Nippon. Along the top we have the action selection spots, over here we have some future workers, and here is the big island of Japan split into four different regions, and then on it are randomly placed uh, demand tiles for the different goods that are available in the game, and these numbers on the board show other countries that are currently supplying the needs for those spots, so we're going to come in, cover those up, and start supplying the needs of the nation. The structure of each player's turn is really quite simple. All you do is grab a single meeple from one of the top rows, and then you take one of the two actions that are associated with that spot for the meeple, or of course just the one action for this zone over here. And the only other option is you don't take one of these meeples and you do a consolidate action, but we'll talk about that once we get there. We'll be playing the game through the perspective of the purple player, uh, who also happens to be the start player. I will explain the different options we have on our turn and what our thinking is behind it, but then I won't go into detail for the red and yellow players. Since this is a game about the industrial revolution of Japan, we really can't do much without a factory. So I think the first thing we're going to want to do is pick an action from this slot here, because what this allows us to do is build factories down here. The top slot lets us um, fulfill foreign contracts, and like I said, when you grab one of these meeples, you do either the top or the bottom spot. So we don't really care about this spot yet, because we don't have any goods or anything yet. We're going to activate this bottom slot here. It's going to cost $6,000, and we're going to purchase our first factory. But before we decide which factory to build, we have to decide which one of these three colored meeples we want to grab in order to activate that spot. Now there are six different colored meeples in the game, and functionally there's no difference between them. The only thing that matters is that later in the game when we consolidate, you spend extra money for each different colored meeple that you have. So you really want to be in a position to grab only a, a small amount of variety of colors. So when we look here, we see that right now there are only two of these black meeples on the board at all. So we probably don't want to grab those. In fact, looking at the future, there are no black meeples at all. And these are going to start coming out as these slots empty. So we definitely don't want to take the black. The red is in three spots, and the blue is also in three spots, but there's four of the blues out here. So I think we're going to go ahead and take this blue meeple here, and then activate the slot, and then in the future, we've opened up the possibility of going here and grabbing a blue, or going here and grabbing a blue and not uh, costing us more money. So we take that blue meeple, and we put it right down into our worker track on the leftmost spot. You always work from the left and work your way to the right. Now we want to take a look at our technology track so we know what kind of factory we can build. We see it's right down here. We start with a technology level of one, but we also have this blueprint here, which is essentially a consumable level of technology. So we can spend this and discard it from our board to get an extra tech. So that's one plus one is two total for the moment. It's also important to know that you're never allowed to have more than one factory that makes a specific good. So right now we have paper and textiles, so if we take one of these textiles, we can't get another one later. Uh, they have all sorts of different things on them. First of all, you can see up here, this means it will cost two coal in order to activate this factory, and all of them have that same requirement. Uh, then looking down at the bottom, in the bottom left, there are some one-shot bonuses, and there are some permanent effects. Like over here, every time we go up the technology track, we get an extra bump. Or right here, we could just go up the technology two bumps right now for free, but that's just a one shot. Uh, this makes going up the technology track cheaper. And then over here, we have just 5,000 yen easily. This helps our income later in the game. Uh, this would let us save a coal every turn. I'll explain why that's important once we get there. We're going to want to grab this one right here. What it means is we get an extra $2,000 every time we consolidate, and we will be consolidating somewhat often. And when you do that, you lose all your money and then gain your income back. So this is essentially an extra $2,000 every time we do our income phase, and I think that's a really solid grab. Once again, this is going to cost two technology in order for us to build, and we have one permanent and one temporary, so we'll discard this one temporary one. We can flip this over, and we have now built this factory, and it goes into our area. And lastly, we need to spend the money that that factory actually costs to build, which is always $6,000 no matter what factory it is. The red player decides to grab this red meeple here in order to build a factory as well, and they decide to grab this paper factory over here, which lets them go up an extra bump on the technology track whenever they do a develop technology action. So they put the worker here, they build their factory by discarding their blueprint, everybody starts with a 1, and then of course they spend the 6,000 yen. 
and the yellow player decides it's still worth it to grab this black people here in order to purchase a factory as well, and they decide to grab this one right here, which is just going to give them 5,000 yen. So the worker goes here, they immediately build this factory by spending their blueprint, it flips over, they need to spend 6,000 yen, uh, which goes to the bank, but then 5,000 of it comes right back again, and that's the end of their turn. But before we take our turn, we've got to fill this slot in. So you take all of the meeples from the top of the future worker track, you move them in here, and now we can take our turn. So we've got a few options. We could grab a worker from over here and produce in our factory. We'd spend that two coal and make some textiles. But I think it makes more sense for us to go over here first and build some machinery. It costs 5, 10, or 15,000 yen in order to upgrade one, two, or three uh, machine parts on our uh, factories. So what that means is we get to make more goods when we operate that factory. And since we only have two coal, that probably makes sense. We probably want to grab one of these two colors here. The yellow is spread out a little bit, but it's doubled up on this spot right here, which lets us build more factories or do contracts. And we already have a blue worker, so I think we're pretty safe on that. Let's grab this white worker here and then uh, build some machinery. I think we're only going to want to build one level of it, so we'll spend 5,000 yen. We place our worker down. And then we get our machinery piece. You see it's a little plus one because we only spent 5,000. We put that right down here on our textile factory. And now when we produce at this factory, we'll actually make two goods instead of one. The red player decides they want to produce. They're going to grab the white worker in order to do that. That person comes down here. They immediately spend both of their coal in order to produce at this factory. Now you can produce at up to three factories, but obviously we only start with one. So these two coal go away. And then you take one more of these black cubes, which kind of can mean a bunch of different things. You put it down here and that means they now have one paper. The yellow player decides to grab this black worker here and activate the machining part area, but they're gonna spend 10,000 yen instead of five to get two upgrades to their machining. So the worker goes up here. They're going to spend their 10,000 yen, so they only have 1,000 yen remaining. And then they get this plus two instead of the plus one. They're going to put that down onto their textile factory, and that means when they produce here, they're actually going to make three textiles. So right now, we've got 1,000 yen and two coal. So obviously, we're going to spend this two coal in order to make some textiles here. But with 1,000 yen, we have a couple options as well. We could use it to go once up on the technology track and once up on the coal track here. Now, we could go over here, grab this, and go up the technology track. That's great because it lets us get bigger and better buildings. But if we get coal, then we're going to be able to activate more of our factories in the future. And we want to look at the colors here. This has two blues, and we have a blue already. We're pretty safe to go ahead and grab that. But we have also grabbed a white worker, which means this area is quite safe as well. If we took this white worker and activated the coal slot, and the other two players grab these blues, then these ones would come up here before we were allowed to even use that spot, and then we'd be stuck taking one of these colors. But I guess one of those is a white. So realistically, we need to think, do we want technology or coal? I think at this point, technology is more important, so let's go ahead and grab this guy. We add our blue worker here. We're gonna spend our 1,000 yen, and we go up once on the technology track. Now, obviously, that was not great. I mean, we need two more bumps till we get to the two level, but it makes us use our money because when we consolidate, which will happen once we uh, don't want to take any more colors because it gets too expensive or we max out at six, we're going to lose all money and coal that we've left, uh, we have left over and then get a new chunk of money. So you really want to use all of the stuff that you have each turn because you're not going to be able to save it from one turn to the next. The red player is going to grab this red worker here, which means they activate this bottom slot. There's only one option and not two. And what this means is you can spend the resources that you have made in order to help uh, supply Japan, giving them the stuff that they need, and also putting you into these areas where you essentially have an area majority scoring. So the red worker goes onto their track. They still only have two different colors. And then they're going to take this one cube down here, which represents a single paper, and they're going to put it out on the board. But in order to do that, we have to convert this cube into influence points. And we do that at this graph here. So we have a single good, so that's going to be this column. And then it is from a level one uh, factory, which is both the paper and the textiles. So that means this cube right here equals a single influence. And these are the influence tiles that the red player has to put out on the board. So they have this single one. They're going to grab that and put it somewhere. They decide to put it in this region here, and since it is paper, they have to put it in a slot that is affiliated with paper, and there's only one of them here, and it's actually really nice for them because there's a three on the board. Now, these numbers printed on the board are the outside influence of other countries that are supplying the needs of the Japanese people. So by putting this one over the three, that means we've actually done a pretty good job of subverting the exports uh, that other countries are giving to Japan. So now the strength of the uh, foreign countries is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is a lot better than 12. 
uh, the red player only has a single one there, but when we do scorings for these regions, the uh, other countries also get to score. So it, right now the red player is in second place, but the more of these white numbers that are covered up on the board, the less influence other countries have in supplying the needs of the Japanese people. And each time you add influence into a region, it has a bonus associated with it. The one for this region is you get a two blueprint, which goes on your board, which again is a consumable technology for uh, building buildings. So the red player throws it there, and that's the end of their turn. The yellow player decides to grab this blue worker here in order to activate their factories, but the moment this guy gets taken, these from the future worker row get put in its place. They add their blue worker here, and then they're going to spend both of these coal in order to activate this factory here. However, since they have this plus two, that means the factory makes one, two, three textiles, so a really big bang for that two coal. So now we're down to just two coal, and I think we should probably activate our factory as well. We could grab a red, white, or yellow worker. Well, we've already grabbed a white worker in the past, so let's grab this one here. We'll put that person down here and then activate our factory. So we spend the two coal the factory needs, and then we get an extra one due to our machining. So both of these cubes turn into textiles for us. The red player decides to activate this area, grabbing this red worker. However, they're going to do the upgrade slot for their technology. Now it costs one, three, or 6,000 yen to get one, two, or three bumps up on the track. They put their worker here and they decide they want to spend 3,000 yen to get two bumps on the track. So this 5,000 go away, they get a couple back, but more importantly, they have this factory down here which gives them an extra bump on the technology track every time they activate that slot. So for that 3,000 yen, they actually go up one, two, three times, which puts them at the two technology level. The yellow player decides to grab this blue worker here in order to fulfill a foreign contract. So they add the blue worker here and now decide which one of these export contracts they want to fulfill. Now the way the iconography works is the number of cubes shows you the number of different types of goods they need to give away and the number inside the cube is the number of that good. That means that these are the only two that they could actually satisfy because this requires two of a single good and this requires three of a single good and they have three of a single good down here. They decide to spend two of these goods, so two of the textiles, in order to fulfill this contract here, so what that means is you flip it over, you're going to get 3,000 yen immediately, but then this right here means their income goes up by three. Now this track right here is their income. It starts at 12,000 yen, which is the same for everybody, and this tells you how much money you're going to get every time you consolidate. So this goes one, two, three, and it means that when they consolidate, they're actually going to get 15,000 yen instead of 12. So they add the one time 3,000 to their current area, they flip this over, it shows a check mark, and that means they obviously can't do that contract again. So it's back to us. We've got no coal, we've got no money, we have two different color people that we've chosen, and we currently have two different textiles. Now, on the one hand, it might make sense for us to try and do that um, export thing that the yellow player just did, because that's three extra bucks for the moment, and also increasing income. Well, that's great. However, we're already going to get 2,000 extra dollars every time we consolidate, and looking out to the action board, we can see that we'd have to take a yellow worker in order to grab one of these contracts, and that would be our third worker. Now, when you consolidate, you lose $3,000 per color of worker in the previous round. So taking this person is gonna cost us $3,000. Fulfilling that contract immediately gets us $3,000 and three more thousand dollars in the next round, which would immediately go to waste. So I don't think that's actually a great option. I think instead what we should do is look over here. The only blue worker that's left on the map is over here, and the only white one's over here, but both these things require money, and we don't have any money. So let's go ahead and pull this guy off and use those textiles somewhere on the map. So we add the blue worker to the track. I like the pattern that we've made here. And then we look down here, and we just need to decide if we want to spend one or two of these textiles, uh, because we can, of course, save the textiles for future rounds once they're created here on the factories. When we look at this chart, we see that two textiles would let us put a two influence down versus the one influence. And the only real influencing factor here is that the higher influence you have in a region, the more likely you are to be higher up in the ranking for whoever has the most. And you get lots of points for being first and less points for being in second, etc. Also, you can bump somebody out from a region if you have a higher number. So for instance, if somebody already had a one influence on this spot here and we've had a two, we could put that two there and kick the one out. However, the board is very open at the moment. I think it probably makes sense for us to keep one of our textiles for the future, maybe for one of those exports, and instead spend a single one of these textiles putting a one influence down on the board. So we've got to put this one influence down into a region that requires textiles. Uh, first of all, you see this region here doesn't need any textiles, which is a bit of a bummer because the bonus for placing there is 5,000 yen, which is great. 
Uh, over here, we could put the one down here, and we'd actually tie red for uh, second place in the region, and we get a uh, two blueprint, which is really nice, because we do want to build more buildings. Over here, we could go here or here, which would cover up a three. We get two coal, but remember, whenever you consolidate, you lose all your money and all your coal. And so we need to spend that coal before we consolidate it. And spending coal right now requires us taking a yellow person, which we don't want to do. We can't go into this region, and this spot over here just gets us two victory points, which is a bit of an end game thing. I think it's relatively obvious we want to place down right here in order to grab two blueprints because right now our technology level is just one, and we want to build more factories. So we put that down here, and that ends our turn. The red player decides to grab this red worker here in order to upgrade their coal track. Much like the technology track, it costs 1, 3, or 6,000 yen to go up 1, 2, or 3 slots. They add that worker here. They only have 3,000 yen, so they'll go ahead and spend that right away, and that gives them two bumps on the coal track, which actually brings them to the 3 level, which means when they consolidate, they will get 3 coal on the next turn instead of 2. The yellow player decides to grab this yellow worker here, which immediately empties the slot, so we take all three of these future workers, and they become current workers. And they're going to upgrade their technology. They had the yellow worker here, which means that's actually their third color, which is a bit unfortunate, but they had 4,000 yen. They really didn't want to waste that by consolidating and just throwing this money away. So they're going to spend 3,000 of that yen in order to get two bumps up on the technology track. All right, so let's look at our situation. We've got no money. We have no coal. We've got blue and white uh, workers here, and we've got a single textile. So looking at the action tracks, the only thing that's white or blue is this slot here, which requires money. But this slot needs money. This needs money or goods we don't have. This needs coal or money we don't have. So the only thing we could do is grab this pink worker over here and put that last textile out, which I don't think makes sense because that would be the third color and that would cost us 3,000 yen when we consolidate. So I've been talking about consolidating a whole bunch. I think it's finally time for us to do it. The first thing that happens is we lose any stored money or coal in our area, but we were good. We spent all of it. The second thing that happens is we're going to get new coal and money. So we look down the tracks, we see we get two coal and 12 money. But remember, we also have this fancy building down here that gives us an extra 2,000 yen every time we consolidate. So we add those in and we're starting the next round with 14,000 yen. Next, we're going to receive the Emperor's Rewards. And if you look to see how far we made it down the track, we got to the four level, which means we get to grab a four level Emperor Reward. And these are listed over here. As you can see, the rewards are all two blueprints, two coal, or 5,000 extra yen. I think having extra money is a great idea because you can do all sorts of upgrades and we're still early game. So we're going to grab this one, which comes with this 5,000 yen. We add that to the pile and it actually means that we're starting with 19,000 yen, not 14. And finally, we take this bonus marker and we flip it over and we see it has a 4x with a victory point symbol. Now what we have to do is put this down on one of these zones in the lower part of our player board. Each one of these sections is potential endgame victory points, and this modifier tells you how many points it would be. So for instance, if I put it right there, that would mean I would get four points for every one of the four regions on the board that I was in at the end of the game, or I could go down here and I would get four points for every two of the contracts that I had fulfilled. And this is tricky because you only get to put it down once. I kind of want to put it here, but I hope in the future we can make it all the way to the end and put a 5x on there to get a bunch of points. And we see you already get one point for each star level on the technology track, which are these, that you make it up, but you don't get any points for the coal track uh, without doing anything. So maybe we'll put this down here and figure as the game goes on, we're definitely going to need to start getting some coal. So we'll put that there and it'll incentivize us to make more coal. And lastly, we clear this worker row. We have two different colors, which means we need to spend 3,000 times two or six. So remember that time when I said we'd start the next round with 19? No, we actually spend 6,000, which means at the end of the day, after all of this consolidating, we've got two coal and 13,000 yen. The red player also decides to consolidate. So they get three coal at the beginning of their next round and 12,000 yen. And they also decide to take 5,000 yen, which they add in. And they decided to put it up here so they'll get four points for each region they are in in the end of the game. And just like us, they had two different colors, which means they're going to lose 6,000 yen for those two colors. So they start the next round with 11,000 yen and three coal. However, the yellow player is not quite ready to consolidate. They're going to grab this yellow worker here in order to increase their coal track. They had their worker in. They already had a yellow, so it didn't have any real impact. And they had this 1,000 yen, which they will spend in order to get one bump up on the coal track. It doesn't do a whole lot for them, but it gets them a little bit farther on this Emperor bonus track, and it means they're not wasting that 1,000 yen. It's back to us. We have a clear board, two coal, 13,000 yen, and one of these textiles in our pocket. And this is tough because we're near the end of one of the rounds of the game. We don't know what any of the future workers are going to be, and many of these slots are currently open. But one thing we do know is that this is the only white worker that is available on the action rows, and there are no white workers on any of our player boards, which means almost all of them, all but one, are in this bag. 
And as soon as I take this, it'll empty the spot and there's no new workers to bring out, which means we're going to do a huge re um, uh, seeding of all these workers. And it's very likely that a bunch of white ones are going to come out and give us some good options. Also, this would let us bump up our coal track. And right now we're only making two coal a turn. And we definitely need to make much more than that as the game moves on in order to keep our factories running. So we put the worker here, and you know what? I think we should spend 6,000 yen. You get, let's get three bumps up on this track. We go one, two, three. That last one is, I guess, a little um, wasted because we're not quite to the four. But what we really want is to be able to have four coal at the beginning of the next time we consolidate so that we can activate multiples of these buildings with one big actuary uh, push. So I'm really trying to set up a nice framework for a big production in the later game. And I'm also hoping that a good color shows up on that spot so we can bump this one more time before we do that consolidation. So before the red player can take their turn, we need to fill up this slot here. And like I said, there are no future workers. This indicates that the round is over. We're gonna take this round marker, push it up once. Nothing really happens, but you see this little mark here? That means when we go from the second round to the third one, we're gonna do a scoring of all the regions on the board. And I'll go into that when we get a little bit closer to it and it seems more relevant. But now what that means, that we refill all of these slots on the board until they have three workers each. And we refill the future row so that there are three chunks of three workers. And as you can see, our gamble did not actually pay off that well. We only have three whites that ended up showing up, so several of them are still in the bag, unfortunately. The red player decides to grab this yellow worker here, and they want to build a new factory. And they want to make bento boxes, specifically this factory right here, which makes uh, going up on the coal track only zero, two, or four dollars instead of one, three, or six. So they put their worker here, and as you can see, this requires a technology level of four, but they have two plus two, so they go ahead and discard this. They flip this over, and now they can make bento boxes. You'll also notice that this factory requires three coal in order to operate instead of the two of the first level ones. Fortunately for red, they have three coal. It's now time for the yellow player to consolidate. They have six workers, which means they can't take any more action. So the first thing is they lose any money or coal, which they don't actually have. And then they get coal and money. So they get two coal from that track. And then they actually get 15 money from their income track. Next up, they go ahead and look at the Emperor Awards. And you see they made it all the way to the five level. Not too surprisingly, they decide to take 5,000 yen because they're going to be spending a lot of money on these workers. And then they decide to flip this over and they're going to put it down on here. So they'll get five points for each of the four regions that they are in at the end of the game. Lastly, they have to pay for and clear their workers. They have three different colors, which means it's going to cost them 9,000 yen in order to pay all those wages. And then they clear the board, so they're going to begin the next round with just two coal, and unfortunately for them, only 8,000 yen. It's back to us, and I think that we want to build a new factory. Specifically, we want to get a paper factory. We already have a textile factory. We uh, can't actually uh, get any of these because we don't have the technology levels. And between the yellow and the black maple, I think it makes most sense to take the black one because we see there is a black one over here on the uh, putting influence down on the map. And it's likely we're going to want to do that at some point this turn. We could also potentially get machinery for cheaper over here. I guess yellow is also there. Um, yellow is on this spot where the going up on the coal track is, but white is there already. And we already have a white maple. So I think taking the black one probably makes the most sense. So let's look at these factories. This one would just give us two blueprints immediately. This one would give us two bumps up on our technology track. And this one makes going up the technology track cheaper at zero, two or four dollars. Uh, this is pretty cool because it means you could actually take that action with zero money and still go up on the track. I think when we want to think about the future and getting some uh, engine building stuff going, let's grab this one and see how we do with it. So we add the black worker. We've got a requirement of two technology. Right now we have one plus this. So we can actually spend this two blueprint and get the remainder back. So in the future we can use that one. We'll go ahead and flip this over and we can now make paper. It's now the red player's turn, but I just realized I forgot to have them pay for building that building in the last round. Oops. The red player decides to take this yellow worker and they're gonna make some machinery, which again costs five, 10 or 15,000 yen for one, two or three pluses. And they're going to add this plus one to their bento box factory so that when they activate it, they'll get two instead of one. The yellow player decides they're going to take this red worker here in order to activate their factory. They'll add the worker here. They'll spend the two coal over here, which is actually going to turn into three textiles. So they're actually maxed out of their factory right now. So right now we've got a white and a black worker in our area, two coal and 7,000 yen. And looking at the actions, we don't actually have very many good ones. Uh, the only black ones are over here. We could get some machining tools, and that is not a bad idea. We might want to do that. We can't actually do this action. We have a single textile, which gives us one influence, but we only have a single one influence token, and we already put it on the map. 
Uh, and then this white one over here, we could go up coal, and we did mention that we wanted to go up at least one more bump on coal. So really, we want to think about doing one of these two at the moment, I think. And you know what? I think that machining tools are awesome. We are eventually going to activate our factories, so I think this makes sense. So let's grab the black worker from this spot, and then let's spend 5,000 of our 7,000 yen to get a single machine tool. Now I can add this to this factory here, or I can flip this one over to a plus two. Since we're already pushing up the coal track quite a bit, we know that we're going to have lots of coal to, in order to activate multiple factories. So let's go ahead and put the plus one down here, so we'll get a bonus on both of them. The red player decides to take a pink worker from this spot, and they want to activate their factory. So they'll add the worker, they now have two colors, and they're going to use all three of their coal in order to activate this bento factory right here, which requires three coal, and that's actually going to create two bento boxes for them because of their plus one machining. The yellow player decides they're going to take one of these pink workers over here, and they're actually going to influence the board. They want to spend two of their textiles down here, which means that they'll be adding their two value influence to the board, and they really need a blueprint, and the only spot where they can put textiles is where we went before. They could only go here because they're putting a two down instead of a one, so this actually bumps our uh, influence out of the region entirely, which is a bit of a blessing and a curse. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of the region, and that's bad, but it means we have this one back, which means we can put it somewhere else on the board and get a bonus. And then the yellow player will get their two blueprint bonus. And this really does give us a great opportunity to efficiently activate our factories, because I think we're going to go over here, we're going to take this black uh, worker here to put influence on the board. So we'll add that worker, and then we'll take our single textile, and now that we have this one influence again, we can put it somewhere, and this is going to work out pretty well for us. So we'll put the one over here, we're going to cover that three, and we're going to get two coal as the bonus for working in that region, which brings us up to four coal total. The red player decides to take the last of the pink workers for putting influence down, which is going to take these three fewer future workers and make them current workers. And they decide they're going to spend a single one of their bento boxes to influence the board. When you look at the graph, we have a single bento box, which is a second level. That means they get to put a three influence down. They decide they need coal, and the only spot that'll take bento boxes is this one right here, which also puts them uh, ahead of us as far as influencing the region, which is a bit of a bummer. And then they get their two coal bonus. The yellow player decides to take this red worker in order to upgrade their technology, and we bring these three future workers into the present day. So they add the worker, and they decide to only spend 1,000 yen in order to go up once on this track, bringing them up to a technology level of two, but they also have this consumable one up here with their blueprints. All right, we've got 2,000 yen and four coal, and four coal means we can activate both of these factories at the same time. And we're in luck because there's a white worker here now, and we've already taken a white worker in our previous action, so let's grab this one. We'll add them to our track. We're going to spend this four coal here. We'll spend two over here, two over here. They both have a plus one, which means both of them make an extra good. So we now have two paper and two textiles. The red player decides to grab this pink worker here in order to activate their factories. So they'll add this one here. They've only got two coal, which means they can activate this factory over here, which is only going to give them a single paper. The yellow player decides to grab this pink worker here in order to influence Japan. And they decide to spend a single one of their textiles to do it. With that single textile, they get to influence a region for one, and they want to go in this region. They can't go here because one to one, that doesn't bump, but they can go over here, and that will get them two more coal that they can use before they consolidate. All right, so we've got 2,000 yen, no coal. We've got white and black workers, and only one more action we can do before we're forced to consolidate. Now, looking around, we see we are one tick away from being able to get four coal when we consolidate, and four coal is great because we get to activate both of our factories down here. So I think we really want to get that one bump up. And fortunately for us, there is a white worker in this spot, so let's go ahead and grab him. And then we're going to take one of our 2,000 yen, and that'll bump us up once on this coal track here. Unfortunately, there's no way to use all of our money this round. That one's going to get wasted, but that happens sometimes. At this point, the red player decides they're going to consolidate. They could actually have placed a yellow one here in order to fulfill a contract, but then they would be wasting some money. They don't want to do that. So the first thing is they lose all money in coal, but they didn't have any to lose. Next up, they're going to grab their three coal and 12,000 yen. Now we look to the Emperor bonus track, we see they got to the 4 level. They decide to take this 2 coal bonus, which means they will actually have 5 coal in the next round instead of 3, which is good because that means they can activate both their factories. This is going to flip over into a 4x bonus modifier for endgame points. And they decide to put that here, which means they'll get 4 points for each star they get to on the coal track. Lastly, they've got to pay for their people, they have 2 different colors, which means they're going to lose 6,000 yen. Which means they'll be starting the next round for them with only 6,000 yen total. The yellow player decides to grab this red worker here in order to activate their factories, which is going to bring these guys up. And that also means that the moment we need to fill another one of these, we're going to go forward and we're actually going to score all the regions of Japan. 
So they'll add their worker. They're going to spend two coal to activate this factory, which makes three textiles. So they're once again maxed out there. It's now our turn and we are forced to consolidate because we can't take any more action. So the first thing is we're going to lose all money and coal. So that means a thousand yen is wasted. That just happens in business, I suppose. Uh, next up, we're going to get our income. We get four coal and we get 12,000 yen. But of course, we add 2,000 for this factory down here. So that is 14 right there. Now we look to the emperor's bonus and we made it all the way to the 5x spot. So let's look at our options. We probably don't want more coal. We've got four already, which is quite good. We could grab this one right here, which would give us two blueprints. We already have a single blueprint and only one technology level, which is pretty poor. Or we could take this $5. So the thing is, we could take this in order to jump up real quick and build a bigger building. But I think at this point in the game, we still want to work on infrastructure. So I think taking this $5 makes more sense. We have a discount for going up the technology track, so we can use this to work our way up the track and maybe use blueprints for the late game when we just need to jump up and grab a building and not worry about it as much. So that gets us 5,000 more yen. And then we have the 5X side. So I think at this point, we want to plunk this down here. Uh, we can definitely envision ourselves being in all four of the regions, and this is the max points we can get for that. So uh, yeah, let's go there. Now we've got to pay for our people. We got two colors, which means we'll be owing 6,000 yen to the bank. So we'll take this five and this one, and that means we're starting the next round with 13,000 yen and four coal. That's a pretty good situation to be in. The red player decides to grab this blue worker in order to activate their factories. They've got five coal, which means they can activate both of their factories at the same time, because again, you can activate up to three factories with this action. So this one right here is going to create a single paper, and this one right here is going to make two bento boxes for them. The yellow player decides to grab this red worker here, and they're going to upgrade their technology track. So the red worker goes here. They're going to spend 6,000 yen, which gives them three bumps, one, two, three, on their technology track. So they are now at the third level, and of course, they also have this blueprint over here. So it's our turn, and we're in a bit of a predicament. If we were to take one of these three actions, at the end of our turn, we would score all the regions on the board, and we're barely on the board right now. We're only in this region, and we're tied for third place, which is really not that great. Uh, so we don't want to do any of those, which leaves these two remaining. This one increases our coal, which is we're fine at, and this one lets us put boats on the board, which cost 5, 10, or 15,000 yen for one, two, or three. But the thing about boats is they give you bonus points if you're the first or the second in a region when it scores, and we are third right now. So really, the only option we have is to go over here and uh, put some stuff down, get into more of these regions as much as we can at the moment. And looking at the colors around, I think grabbing a blue worker is the best way to go. Now let's look at the resources we have. We have two paper and two cloth, both of which are uh, first level stuff, which is pretty weak, unfortunately. And we can influence up to three regions, but since we've already used our one, we have only access to this two. In order to put a three down, we would need three of one of these goods, and we don't have it. We have all this coal, but we were not able to activate it without forcing the scoring. So I think when we look at all of these, the thing that makes the most sense is we're going to take both of our paper here and put them out on the map. Paper is a level one resource, and we have two of them, so that lets us put our two down. And I think we want to go in this region because we'll get 5,000 yen as a bonus, which is pretty great. Uh, paper is uh, the same on both of these in its location, so we'll just go ahead and throw that two down there. And for the moment, we're in second place. Of course, the um, foreign countries are all still beating us, but that's okay because if you look at this track over here, you'll see in the first scoring round, second place gets you seven points, which is not bad at all. And because we went in that region, we get an awesome 5,000 yen bonus. So we have, wow, 18,000 yen to work with in this round and still five actions to go. So a very good position to be in. The red player decides to grab this white worker from this zone to influence the board. And they decide to take a single one of their bento boxes, and they're going to want to put it in this region as well. Remember, bento boxes are second level goods, so that lets them put a three influence down, and they're going to put it down right there, which is really unfortunate for us, because we were in second place, and now we're in third place for the region, but that's still five points. I guess it's only a two-point loss. It's worth noting that the red player could have also spent paper and put paper down, because when you do one of these actions, you get up to three of them, but... All three of those actions have to be within a specific region, and they decided they wanted to use the paper elsewhere. So the red player gets a 5,000 yen bonus, and now it's time to fill this action up, but of course all of our future workers are gone, which means we have to move this marker up, and we've now crossed the scoring threshold. At this point, we are going to score each one of the regions. The first region is easy. Nobody went there, so nobody gets any victory points. For the second region, we need to count up all of the influence. First of all, the uh, non-player influence is 3 plus 2 is 5, 6, 7, 8. So they take first place. Second place is going to be red with 3. Third place is going to be us with 2, and there is no points for fourth place. Uh, once again, we look at this little chart here. We see that the non-player character would get 10 points, so nothing happens there. 
Red is going to get 7 points, and we will get 5. And you may notice we all started with different amounts of points. This just corrected for first player advantage. So the red player goes up 7, and we go up 5. Now we shift over to this region. We see that foreign influence is still 7, so they still take first. Uh, red is in second place with third, and then purple and yellow are both tied for third place. And in that case, we divide the total of 5 points in half, and we round down. So red gets 7 points, and yellow and purple both get 2. And lastly, over here, the foreign influence is 8. Yellow is in second place with 2, and red is in third place with 1. So yellow gets 7 points, and red gets 5 more points. And as you can see, after that first scoring, red did very well, uh, mostly on the back of getting to those second level goods before everybody else. We've been focusing on engine, which is why we are so far behind right now. I'm hoping that all that focus will pay off and we can catch back up with the second and third scorings of the game. So now we fill all the action slots up to three workers and we put in the future workers. It's now the yellow player's turn and they have to consolidate because they're out of actions. So first things first, they're gonna lose this 1,000 yen. Uh, next up, they're gonna get two coal from the bank and then they're gonna get 15,000 yen. Now we look to the emperor's rewards. They got to the fifth level. And if you look at the chart, you'll see that these tokens are starting to deplete. In fact, the 5,000 yen options are both gone from the four and five X spots. You can always take one that's lower and the yellow player doesn't look happy about this, but they decide they're going to grab this one. It only has a 3x multiplier on the back, so it hurts their endgame scoring uh, side of it, but they really need more money, so they're going to take the 5,000 yen. And they decide to put the 3x down here, so they'll get 3 points at the end of the game for each pair of completed contracts they have. And finally, they need to pay for their workers. They only have two colors, so that's going to cost them 6,000 yen. And all their workers go back into the bag. All right, it's our turn. We've got a blue worker already. 18,000 yen and four coal. So that's a lot of stuff. We can definitely do a bunch of different things, but I'm feeling like the first thing that we should probably do is just fire up this coal, shove it into these two factories and make two paper and two uh, textiles. So let's grab this blue worker over here in order to do that. Put the blue worker here and then take this four coal. We'll use two to fire that one and two to fire this one. Each of them makes two things. So now we've got six stuff which is quite a lot, although unfortunately, these goods are not the best quality, but I think we really need to start doing some of these um, export contracts to boost up our income and just use this lower level stuff. The red player decides to grab this blue worker here and they are gonna upgrade their coal track. So they add their worker up here and we see down here they have the building that gives them a discount for increasing coal, so it's only 4,000 yen to get three ticks up, so they'll discard this five, they'll get a one, and then they'll go one, two, three up on the track, they are a single bump away from getting five coal on uh, their next time they consolidate. The yellow player decides to grab this yellow worker here and they are gonna build another building. And they've decided to grab this bento box making factory right here. So this factory is gonna cost them $6,000 because again, all factories cost $6,000. And for technology, they're currently at three, which means they can cash in this two and take a single one left over. Then they're gonna flip this over and you'll see that the bonus for this is every time they increase up the coal track, which they need to do quite a bit of, they're gonna get an extra bump. All right, so we've got the two blue workers, a bunch of resources. We do have 18,000 yen, but I think we need to start doing some foreign exports. We have four more turns to spend all this money, and there are ways to spend quite a bit of money in the game, so let's go ahead and look what our options are. And it looks like our options are a black worker or a black worker, so we'll go ahead and take this one here, and that's okay. Uh, we see over here that there is a black worker involved with this spot here, which would let us build trains. We haven't talked about trains yet. Uh, they cost five, 10, or 15,000 yen, for one, two, or three of them, and they add to your influence in a region as long as you have a little bit in there. So it's a sort of cheap way to boost up your influence, which we'll want to do near the late game. So anyway, we'll grab this black one and do our foreign contracts. The nice thing about this is we can do up to three contracts, and we have quite a bit of stuff. The first thing I think we'll do is spend two of our textiles in order to cash in this foreign contract here. It requires two of something. Uh, we'll get 3,000 yen, and then we'll bump up our income three times. So we'll go one, two, three, and get 3,000 yen. And next up, we look at this one, it requires one of two different types of goods. So we can do this one as well, because we'll just get rid of one paper and one of our textiles. We're gonna go up two more times on our income track, so now we'll be making 17,000, um, plus uh, two, of course, when we consolidate, which is nice. And then we take four more thousand yen. So we now have 24,000 yen. I'll deal with that pile later, and uh, lots of options for going forward. The red player decides to grab this black worker here and they are going to fulfill some foreign contracts. They'll put them down here. That is their third color, but at some point, sometimes you just have to spend a bunch more money to get things going. Uh, they are going to spend two of their paper down here 
to cash in this contract right here. That's going to give them three bumps up on their income track, which I guess will negate the extra 3,000 they need to spend uh, for the moment. And then they're going to get 3,000 yen from the bank. And then we'll fill this slot in with the future workers. The yellow player is going to grab this yellow worker here, and they're going to fill a foreign export contract. That'll go over here. And this is going to be the one that they fulfill. It requires three of one thing. So they're going to get rid of three of their textiles in order to uh, flip this over. They'll get three uh, bumps up on their income track. And then they also get 4,000 yen immediately. It's back to us. And it looks like I did my math wrong last time. We actually have 25,000 yen. Uh, we've got two blue workers, black worker, and no coal at the moment. And one thing we know is we need to get some better buildings. And our technology is currently terrible. We do have this over here, which will give us discounts for bumping this up, so I think we need to start working on that. And unfortunately, there is a pink and a red worker on that slot. Right now we have blue and black in our area, and the real unfortunate thing is we kinda wanna hit this multiple times, but there's two different colored workers there. Man, that is a big bummer. But we know that uh, another player, the uh, yellow player, is likely to produce at some point. So looking ahead, oh man, these are all not great either. I guess the black might match up. Well, either way, let's grab one of these. I think red maybe makes, no, no, well, let's go with pink. Pink has better options down here. We'll grab this pinker worker right here, and we're going to bump up our technology. So that is our third color. We're going to go ahead and spend 4,000 yen, and then that will give us one, two, three bumps up on the technology track. We're now at the two level, and we do have this over here, but man, we really need to get to the three so that we can make the difference and get a second level building. The red player decides to grab this black worker right here, and they are going to get some machine tools. They're going to spend all 10,000 yen that they have in order to get two tools. And you're not allowed to save these if you have slots to do it. So they're going to spend one, they're going to upgrade this bento factory up to a two, and then put the other one down onto their paper factory. The yellow player grabs one of these yellow workers, and they're going to bump up their coal track. They're going to go ahead and spend 6,000 yen in order to go up three times. Plus, they also get one every time they do this activation, so they go up one more. It's back to us, and we still have 21,000 yen. And we need to start thinking about spending it. We only have two actions left. Uh, we've got blue, black, and pink with our worker set. And right now, there are no black. We do have a blue and a pink over here and here, and we have nothing that we can put out onto the board. So realistically, we've got to go to this spot. We could do machine tools, but continuing to upgrade our, our single level of factories might not make as much sense as starting to get some trains on the board. So I think let's go ahead and grab uh, this pink person right here, and let's build some trains. We'll see that it costs... 5, 10, or 15,000 yen to make one, two, or three trains that go on the board that cannot go into the same region. We'll throw this worker right down, and considering we have so much money, I think we may as well just spend the 15,000 yen right off the bat, and we're going to build three trains. So we take the trains from our player board right here, and as you'll see, there is this little one with an arrow. That's going to give us more income every time we have a pair of train and boat that is unlocked. So we've definitely incentivized ourselves to build some boats now, because every time we build a boat, we're going to go up on the income track. So each train has to go into a different region of the board. Right now we're only in these two regions, so I think it's a no-brainer that we're definitely going to want to put trains down in both of those. And the thing is that trains only give you this plus two to your influence if you have anything in that zone already. So I would need to think, am I more likely to go into this zone or that zone? The bonus for that zone is just straight up victory points, which is pretty great near the end of the game. So let's go ahead and put this down here and hope to find ourselves in that zone later to get some extra points. The red player decides to consolidate, so they lose all money and coal, but they have none to lose. Then they're going to get coal. Unfortunately, they're one tick away from five, but they're only going to get four coal from the bank for that, and then 15,000 yen. Next up, we'll see how far they got on the track. They got to the four level for the emperor's bonus, and they decide to take the blueprint one, so they get this two blueprint to go over there. They'll flip this over and add the 4x to one of their scoring locations, and they decide to go here, for, so they'll get four points at the end of the game for each pair of contracts that they fulfilled. And lastly, they have to pay for their workers. They have three colors, which is going to cost 9,000 yen. So this 10 goes goodbye. They'll get this one here, and they're starting off with only 6,000 yen, but they do have four coal in their area. The yellow player decides to take this yellow worker once again, and once again, they're going to bump up their coal track. They've done a really good job of keeping to one color so far, and they're actually going to spend all 6,000 of their yen to go up three plus one, so four, one, two, three, four on the track. They're one shy of getting seven coal. Right now it's six coal, which they definitely can use. That actually leaves a little bit of a remainder, so they're probably going to be looking to buy some more factories soon. And now we got to fill in this vacant spot. It's back to us. We have one action left. We have blue, black, and pink workers that we've taken, and 6,000 yen that we probably want to use as well as we can. We really don't want to take a fourth color, which is unfortunate because we'd love to bump our science track some more. But uh, looking at things right now, we have 
pink over here, that is not good for us. We've got blue and black, so we have these two options, which actually gives us a bunch of pretty good stuff. Uh, first of all, just getting a machine tool for five and just wasting one of ours is not that big of a deal. We could go over here with our six, and we can get three bumps up on the coal track, which would actually make us uh, get us five coal in the next round, although we don't even have a way of spending that much. And then down here, we, we've done a bunch of trains, but we do have this boat thing. We could spend five of our 6,000 yen to put a boat down, which means that as long as you're first or second in a scoring region, you get two bonus points. Plus, now that we put these trains down, we would get a bump up to our income. And I think that sounds fun. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take this black worker from here. We'll add them to our board and then spend 5,000 yen in order to put our first boat down onto the board. And the moment we vacated that spot, our income went up by one. Now we want to put this down in a region that we're sure we're going to get first or second place in so that we actually score those two points. Uh, so right now we're in these two zones here. Uh, we're much stronger here with a two rather than the one. So also there's less competition over here. There's two people and there's three over here. So let's go ahead and put our boat down over there. And we're doing quite a bit of stuff over there. Also, we like going there because it gives us 5,000 yen every time. So those bonuses are great. I think that's a pretty solid shot. The red player is going to grab one of these red workers and they're going to build a new factory. And they decide they want to grab this lens factory right here. And the bonus is you just get to put two boats down on the board. So first things first, they've got to spend the 6,000 yen in order to build the factory. They need four technology. They have two plus two. So they'll discard this uh, blueprint flip this guy over, put it down, and now immediately they're going to take two of their boats and put it down on the board. And the red player decides to go here and here, kind of piggybacking what I was doing, but those are definitely their two strongest areas. The yellow player decides to grab this red worker here and they are going to uh, activate their factories. Unfortunately for them, they were not able to keep their streak of yellow workers alive, uh, but it's still worth it to them because they would have just lost these two cubes, and now they get to spend both of these cubes over here, which will generate them three paper, I mean uh, three textiles, which is still just really good to have for foreign exports and other things. And now we fill in the vacancy with the last of the workers for this current round, and it's back to us, and we have to consolidate because we are out of actions. So first things first, we're going to lose this 1,000 yen, unfortunately, but now we're going to grab four coal and 18,000 yen plus uh, two, so actually four coal and 20,000. Now we get to look at the Emperor's Reward. We made it to the five level once again. And with four coal, I still don't think we need this coal bonus. We're still quite behind on the technology. So let's go ahead and grab the, uh, this two blueprint. That'll help us jump up and finally get a better uh, not tier one factory. And that's gonna get us our two blueprints. So we have three total. And now we need to decide what we're gonna put this 5X multiplier down on. We've already got two contracts fulfilled. So if we put it down here, then that would be worth five points right off the bat. Uh, other stuff we're particularly good at uh, are, I guess, coal. Well, not really. We haven't gone that far up the coal track. We've got three trains down, which is pretty big. And so already we've hit one star. So putting it on the train spot, this would already be worth five points. And for every further train we put down, we'd be getting five points at the end of the game. That sounds kind of great, actually. Let's go ahead and do that. And lastly, we have to pay our workers. There are three colors. So that's 9,000 yen. So we only start with 11,000 yen this time, much less than the last round. But I think we could still do quite a bit with that. The red player is going to grab this white worker and they're going to activate the factory. They're going to take three out of their four coal and they're going to activate the lens factory over here, which unfortunately for them only makes a single cube worth of lenses, but it's still going to be worth it for them. The yellow player decides to consolidate, so they have no money or coal to lose, so they will now get some. They get six coal, which is quite a bit, from the bank, and then they're going to get 18,000 yen. Next up, they're going to look to the emperor's rewards and they got up to the four level. And they decide to take the two blueprint ones, so they now have three blueprints total. And then they have the 4x modifier on the back. And they decide to put that down here so they'll get four points for every factory that has a plus two on it. Now they have to pay their workers. They have two colors, so that's going to cost them 6,000 yen. And that's going to leave them with 12,000 yen for the start of their next turn. All right, it's back to us. We have no workers right now. We've got 11,000 yen for coal, and we need to figure out where we want to go. We're in a pretty good position, but I can really tell that just being stuck on these level one buildings is going to really start bogging us down going forward. And I have a bit of a crazy idea. We are two technology levels away from getting to the third level, and we could have three plus three, which would be six. That would let us buy a third level building. We'd go right from one to three, skipping the middle section. And I've got my eye on this one light bulb factory. You'll see, first of all, they take four coal to run, and we have four coal, so that's nice right there. And this one immediately gives you two factory upgrades. I could throw both of these on this factory and this turn produce three light bulbs, which is really crazy when it comes to influencing the big board out there because 
each singular one of these is worth five influence points. So I think this is a pretty good plan for us to shoot for. So that means we're going to take the yellow worker or the blue worker. Uh, looking around, we see that blue is only on these two spots here. We're only going to have 3,000 yen left over after we build that building for 6,000 yen. So these aren't too great. But with 3,000 yen, we could bump up our coal track twice, which would get us to make five coal every time we consolidate, which is good considering these factories require a lot of coal now. So let's go ahead and grab this yellow worker and upgrade our technology. We've got this discount down here, so it's only going to cost us 2,000 yen in order to do that. And by that, I of course mean go up twice on our technology track so that we are at the third level. The red player is going to grab this white worker here and they are going to influence Japan. And they're going to take their single lens here, which is a level two building, and they're going to look at the influence chart and they'll see that a single one of a second level building will let them put a three influence tile down. However, they've already spent both of their threes. Fortunately for them, you are allowed to put a influence tile of a lower value down. So they're going to take this two here and they're going to replace this three that's on the board for the lens. And that is going to give them two coal from the bank, which will go right into their supply. So they now have three coal, which they can use for two of their buildings. And it also means that they are now first place in this region because the foreign uh, non-player character is at four power, they're at five. We are currently at three with this one plus two, so we definitely want to do something about it. Because if you look down here, there are only three scorings in the game, and the second one for first place, that's 15 extra points. And the red player has a boat over there, so we definitely want to make sure we do something about that. The yellow player is going to grab this red worker here, and they are going to build a new factory. They decide to grab this one right over here which has a special ability of making boats uh, cheaper to play. And then we can see the technology required is four, and they have three regular, and they also have a blueprint of one, so they'll discard that, flip this guy over, and now they have a lens factory. We now need to refill this spot, but there are no future workers, so we'll move the round token up once. We're now one round away from the second scoring, and now we fill up all these slots to three. So we have 9,000 yen and one yellow worker, and I think we want to try to build that uh, light bulb factory I was talking about the last time around, because we have three technology here plus three expendable, we can get all the way to six. Unfortunately for us, there are no yellow workers in the spot, so we need to grab a blue or a red. Now, on first glance, it looks like blue is the right thing to go, because there's blue over here and over here, but both those spots also have yellow, which we are okay with. This red is only here, but there are some coming in the future, so we can kind of Kind of hedge our bets on this. I suppose we should go with blue because if somebody grabs a yellow out from underneath us on one of these spots, we're still relatively safe. So we're going to grab this blue worker here and build the building. I pretty much have my heart set on this factory, like I mentioned before, that gives you two free machine tools, but let's look at the other options. This one just automatically produces one extra more, so if you had a 2x on this, you'd make four, which is pretty crazy. This one is just one coal cheaper in order to run it, and this one right here makes getting new machine parts cheaper at 2712, which is also pretty nice. And then over here, we have stopwatches. This one is also just one less coal. This one right here would immediately put two trains out on the, uh, the board, which is pretty good. Uh, this one would flip all trains that are not currently built to a plus three side instead of a plus two side. We've already built three trains, so that would have less of an effect on us. And then over here, this is a discount for putting trains out. So I think let's stick with the plan. That seemed like a pretty good idea. So this is gonna cost us 6,000 yen. And then we prove that we have the six technology by discarding both of these blueprints. And now we've got this light bulb factory. We'll take the bonus of the two machine tools and we'll just stick it right on the light bulb factory. And now when we run this, we will get three light bulbs. The red player is gonna grab this white worker over here and they are going to influence Japan. They're gonna grab both of these bento boxes down here. So that is two level two buildings, which lets them put their four influence down on the board. And they decided to put it down over here, which is going to get them two blueprints as a bonus. This also puts them back in the lead for controlling this region. The yellow player is going to grab this yellow worker here, and they are going to run their factories. They're going to take all six of their coal, and they'll put three of it for this factory and three of it for this one. They have no machine tools on either of them, however, so each one makes a single good, so they now have a lens and a bento box. It's back to us, and I think we want to try and run this awesome light bulb factory now. We've got a yellow and a blue worker. And fortunately for us, there is a blue worker over here, so we'll go ahead and grab this to run the factory. So we'll put this guy here and take all four of this coal and run this light bulb factory, which is going to make one normal and then two extra ones due to the machinery that we put in there. The red player decides to grab this black worker here, and they are also going to run their factories. And these new workers are going to slide into that place. 
Unfortunately for the red player, that is their third color, but they really didn't want to waste these three coal. They throw those into this bento box factory, and it turns into three bentos. The yellow player grabs this red worker here, and they are going to fulfill a foreign contract. They've decided they're going to take one of their bento boxes and one of their textiles, so that is uh, two different cubes, and they are going to fulfill this contract right here. That's going to give them 4,000 yen right now, and it also gives them two bumps up on their income track. So we've got 3,000 yen, blue and yellow workers, and we've got three light bulbs, which are really great, because each one of these individually could put a five or lower influence down on the board. And that is great, but we're in a bit of a predicament. Uh, unfortunately, light bulbs only show up t once in this region here. It would be really great if it was on both of these, because we could have made 5,000 yen for each placement. Uh, there are two light bulbs over here, though. And in that region, you get two victory points for each placement. And also, I have a train over there, so maybe you want to get a boat over there uh, at some point. What I'm thinking is I could take one of these pink people and drop a light bulb over here and get 5,000 yen, which get, would get me up to eight. And then I could grab maybe a yellow person and build another boat, which is going to give me an income, which is great. Throw the boat over there and then go hit this one spot one more time to throw both light bulbs over here before the scoring happens. And I think we have enough time to do that. The issue is that if we take a, a pink person, somebody else might come in and grab the other pink person, and then two blacks and a red would go over there. And we don't want to take a fourth color. So in that case, we would probably consolidate and then try to come back with one of those. I think, uh, let, let's do this. I think we'll do this. So we grab this pink person here, and then we'll take a single one of our light bulbs. And as you can see, a single one of the third level lets us put one of our two five influences down on the board. Uh, these are light bulbs, so we'll go ahead and put it there. We now have five, six, seven, eight, nine influence in the region, so we're definitely in first place. Uh, the uh, foreign countries are still in second with six, and then red is in third right now, which means they actually are not going to be getting the benefit of this boat. So they're probably going to try to make a pushback into re this region. But for the moment, we're going to get 5,000 yen as a bonus. The red player is going to grab this black worker here, and they are going to go up on their coal track. They currently have no money, but they have a building which lets them go up the coal track once for zero money. That goes up here, and they now make five coal when they consolidate, which they'll be doing next turn. The yellow player grabs one of these yellow workers, and they are going to build machinery. They're going to spend 10,000 yen in order to do two machine upgrades, and they're going to put both of them down on their level two buildings, so they now make two lenses and two bentos when they operate those factories. All right, it's back to us. We have yellow, blue, and pink workers. Unfortunately, no one took the other pink worker over here, so we can go ahead and take this and put our other two light bulbs down, so that's great. And we'll go ahead and slide these guys over there. So we'll put the pink guy down here and grab both of these light bulbs. And one of them is going to turn into this five influence, and the other one is going to turn into this four because we've run out of fives. We're going to put both of them down into this region because, again, you always have to put all separate influence tiles into one region. And the order doesn't matter, so we'll put that one there and this one here, which means we now actually have nine plus two. We have 11 power in this region. And for each placement, we got two victory points. So we go one, two, three, four, and we're catching back up. The red player must consolidate, so they have no money or coal to get rid of. They now get 5 coal from the bank, and then they get 15,000 yen. Next up, they go ahead and grab an Emperor's Reward. They got all the way up to the 5 level. And unfortunately for them, the only 5 ones left are these 2 coal, which they could use, but they really need extra money. They are going to be in a pretty bad place if they don't. So they're going to go and take hit this one right here, which gives them 5,000 yen. Unfortunately, it's a 2x on the back instead of a 5, so that's a big bummer. So they get that 5,000 yen, and then they're going to put this 2x down, probably on something they don't think they're going to do that great at. And they figure they're pretty close to getting uh, another boat out, but they don't have an amazing money engine to get lots of boats out, so they'll go ahead and do that. And lastly, they have to pay for their people. They have three colors, which means they're going to lose 9,000 yen. But that now leaves them with 11,000 left over because they took that bonus. It would have been six, which really is not that much money at all. The yellow player decides to grab this red worker here, and they are going to put stuff down into Japan. They decide to take one lens and all three of their textiles here. So the three textiles are level ones, so that will be one of their three influences. And then their one lens is a level two, so that will also be a three influence tile. And they're actually going to do two bumps. They're going to put this one here, because the three is greater than the two, kicking this one out. And then this three is greater than the one, so that's a pretty huge upset for the region. Yellow now has seven power total. Uh, we have zero, because this train does not do anything for us if we have no influence in this region. And uh, red now has three. So we really want to get something into this region before we score. 
And because of that, yellow also gets four coal as a bonus. Okay, it's back to us. We have one slot left. We're a little bit concerned about losing um, all influence in that one particular region, but it does mean we have this one we could place somewhere, which might be pretty handy. Uh, so let's see if we can spend, we have, uh, let's see, five, we have 8,000 yen over here. And unfortunately, there's no great way to spend 8,000 yen. We could use 6,000 yen in order to go up on these tracks. Over here, that's not great because we don't have any reds, whites, or blacks at all. So we don't want to do any of those. Over here, we could go up three times on the coal track, but that would just mean we'd be making five coal instead of four a turn. And right now, our factories make uh, use four coal or two coal. So that's not really that necessary. I think the thing that makes the most sense, it's a little odd, is we're going to build another boat. We're going to waste 3,000 yen, which is a pretty big bummer. But I think at the end of the day, it'll be worth it because we can throw the boat up into that region over there. It'll get us two extra points uh, in this scoring and hopefully also in the final scoring of the game. Also, it's going to unlock another income. So let's go ahead and do it. We'll grab this yellow worker here. We'll put them down there. We'll spend the 5,000 yen. And then we get to take this boat, which frees up this income boost that I was just talking about. So we're now going to be making 19 plus 2 or 21,000 yen when we consolidate. Unfortunately, we're going to lose 9,000 right away, but that puts us in a reasonable position for the next turn, and it really is a bummer losing this money, but that's just how it worked out. And we'll go ahead and put this boat over here where we are just dominating the region. The red player decides to grab this blue worker here, and they are going to build some machinery. They're going to spend 10,000 yen in order to get two machinery upgrades, and they're going to put both of them down into their lens factory. The yellow player is going to grab this red worker here, and they are going to activate their factories. So they'll put this here, and they're going to use three out of this four coal in order to activate this lens factory, which is going to make two lenses for them. And unfortunately, they're not going to be able to spend this last coal, but uh, this was a bonus. They weren't really planning on that originally. It's back to us, and we have to consolidate. So these 3,000 yen go bye-bye. We didn't get to use them. Then we get four more coal, and then 19 plus two, or 21,000 yen. And then we look to the emperor's bonus, and we got all the way to the five level. And the only option that's left is coal. Uh, we could probably use this coal. I think we probably would like money better, but we really do want to get this 5x multiplier on the back. So we add the two coal to our area, and then we need to put this down on something. And 5x, it, this might be the last time we have access to this, so we want to put this down on the thing that we think we're going to do the best at. And right now, we have a, one factory with uh, two tools and two factories that are one away. I kind of feel like we should put it down here where we'll get five points per factory that has a double tool on it. It probably makes sense for us to get these up to doubles anyway so that we can slam through some of these contracts near the end of the game. So let's go ahead and put that down there. And now we have to pay for our workers. We have three different colors, so that's going to cost us 9,000 yen. And then we throw all these guys in the bag, and that's the end of our turn. The red player grabs this black worker here, and they are going to activate their factories. They have five coal, so they'll put three of it over here into lenses, and then two into paper. So they get two paper, and they get three lenses. The yellow player must consolidate, so they lose their coal that they weren't able to spend, and then they immediately get six coal back. Next up, they're going to get 20,000 yen. They follow that up with the Emperor's Reward, which is at this 5 level. And they decide to take this 2 coal 5x as well, which is actually the last 5x multiplier that's on the board. So they get the 2 coal, and then they're going to put the 5x on the coal track, so they'll get 5 points at the end of the game for each star. They've made it up, they've already hit 2, and they could definitely go up higher with this booster here. Finally, they have to pay their workers. They have two different colors, so that's going to cost them 6,000 yen. And then we'll throw these guys into the bag. All right, so it's our turn. We've got 12,000 yen and no workers. We've also got six coal, which is great because it means we can fire off uh, our big light bulb factory and then one of the other two. And the thing that's concerning is the timing of this next scoring, because as soon as one of these four workers get grabbed, these three will jump up. If another one of these single workers gets grabbed, then we're going to go into a scoring. So it's somewhat likely that if we took one of these single guys, we would uh, the scoring would happen before we get another turn. And we really want to be in this region to just have any shot at getting some points for it. It's eight points just for the third player, which is really not that bad. So right now, we do have the capacity to put a single paper down over here. Uh, when we do that, we'd have one plus two, which would actually tie the red player uh, at three, which means we would divide eight and a half by four. So it's a four point move. It would also get us two coal. Right now we have six coal. If we got two more, we would have eight. And we need eight coal to fire all three of our factories in one shot. So I think that's gonna be our best plan. So let's grab this black worker over here in order to influence Japan. And then we're gonna take this single paper, like I was talking about. 
and it's going to turn into this one influence tile, which we just got because the yellow player bumped it off the board. We'll plunk it down right there. So as I said before, we are now at three influence, which ties red, and then we get two coal as a bonus. The red player is going to grab this black worker in order to influence Japan, and that's going to bring these last three future workers for the round up into that action slot. And they're going to grab three of their lenses and two of their paper. The two paper turns into a two influence, and the three lenses turns into a five influence. They'll put the paper influence over here and the lens influence over there. They've put two different tokens down into this region, which means they're going to get that 5,000 bonus twice, so they get 10,000 yen. And it also means that with 10 influence, they are now beating us because we only have nine when we include that train over there. The yellow player decides to grab this pink worker here, and they are going to influence the board. And they're going to grab both of their lenses. And two lenses allows them to place their four influence tile. And they're going to put it up here, which will immediately get them two points as a bonus. And it puts them tied with the foreign influence for second place. It's back to us. We've got one black worker, 12,000 yen, and eight coal. And only one good right now, which is a textile, which does really no good for us as far as influencing because we've already used the one. And I think we might want to grab one of these four to initiate the scoring because right now we are in first in one region, second in this region, but both those regions we have boats. And then we are tied for third in this region here. Uh, the red player is currently first in this region. They are second in this region and they are third in this region tied with us. So only one of their boats activates. So we kind of have a leg up on them over there. And the yellow player is in first here. They are in fourth over here and they are tied for second over here. So right now we have the best position and we have almost no goods. Uh, the red player does have three bento boxes, so on their turn they could potentially throw some down there uh, or maybe put it somewhere else on the board, like maybe up here, and contest somebody else. So I think we want to activate scoring right now because we're in the best position. We don't want to give anybody else a shot. And I think we want to take this spot here and build some machinery. We've got 12,000 yen, so we could easily buy two of these. Remember, we just put the 5x multiplier on maxing out our factories, and we have enough coal to run every one of our factories. So this would allow us on the next turn to run our factories and get three goods at all of them. So let's go ahead and grab this guy, and we're going to use him to spend this 10,000 yen here to get two machinery upgrades. We'll flip this one into a two, and we'll flip this one into a two. So now we go to refill this spot here, and we can't. So we push this token over and we go into the second round scoring. As you can see, in the second round, you get 15 points for first place in a region, 11 for second, and 8 for third. We'll start up here, and we currently have uh, nine. We have 11 influence in this region, so we definitely win it. And we have a boat, so we get 15 plus 2, or 17 points. Which brings us all the way to 38. And then the yellow player has 4, and the 4 imports are also at 4, so they tie. And when you tie for second, it kind of means that you're both second and third at the same time. So you add both of those points up, 11 plus 18 is 19, and then you divide that by two and round down. So both players would get nine points. Of course, you don't score points for the foreign countries, so yellow gets nine points, which brings them to 32 points. Next up, we've got this region where red just barely edges us out with 10 influence to our nine. Both of us have boats, and boats activate if you're first or second. The uh, foreign imports are way below us, so we don't have to worry about that. So that means red is going to get 15 plus 2, or 17 points, which brings them to 47. And we get 11 plus 2, or 13 points, which gets us all the way to 51. Next up is this coal generating region where yellow has 7 influence, and they take first place, but they don't have any boats, so they just get 15 points. And that brings them up to 47. And red has three, and we have one plus two or three, but the foreign imports have four. So that means both red and I tie for third place. And as you can see, over on the side of the screen, third place is eight points. So we just divide that by two, and we both get four points. Which brings us to 55, and red to 51. Lastly, in this blueprint region, we see that the foreign imports are still winning with six. And then red has five, so they get second place. Uh, they have no boats, so that's going to be worth 11 points to them. That brings them up to 62. And yellow comes in at third with two influence, which is going to give them eight more points, which puts them at 55. So as you can see, after that scoring round, these scores definitely got a little bit tighter. So now we refill all the action slots. At this point, I'm going to explain these golden spots here. You'll notice these were all teal, and that's the way the game has gone so far, but 
as soon as we deplete down these future workers and this bumps over here at the end of somebody's turn, it's going to signify that everybody is going to get three more turns. At the end of the player who uh, pushed us over the first time's next turn, you'll push us forward and then push it forward. And at the end of that last turn, there'll be a final scoring for the game. The red player decides to grab this black worker and they are going to build some railroads. They're going to spend 10,000 yen, which lets them build two trains. They need to go into different regions, but the moment they take both of these, it actually bumps up their income twice. And they've got boats in both of these regions, so they figure they should support those. They weren't able to score one of the boats last round, they were pretty bummed about that. The yellow player grabs this pink worker here, and they are going to be building some machinery. They're going to spend 10,000 yen in order to get two upgrades, and they'll simply make both their bento box factory and their lens factory a plus two. Yellow is going to grab a white worker and they are going to upgrade their technology. They're going to spend 6,000 yen in order to bump up one, two, three times on their technology track. All right, it's back to us. We've got a bunch of coal. We've got a bunch of stuff we can make. We've got a black and a yellow worker. I think let's try to produce stuff. Fortunately for us, there is this yellow guy right here, so we can now produce in up to three of our factories. So we'll throw this guy down here and then we'll activate all of our coal. Two of it will go over here, two will go here, and four will go over here. So down here, uh, actually in all three of these factories, we're going to generate three goods. So we get three light bulbs for that. We're going to get three paper for that. And then we will get three textiles. The red player decides they are going to consolidate, so they're going to lose 1,000 yen. They're going to get five coal from their track, and then 17,000 yen for their income. They made it up to the three spot on the Emperor's Favor, but there are no more Emperor's Favor tokens for the four or five, so there's no real incentive to go that far. They grab a blueprint bonus, so they now have four blueprints total. And they put their 3x down here, so at the end of the game they'll get three points for each factory that has a plus two machinery on it. Now they've got to pay for their workers, they have two different colors, so that's going to cost them 6,000 yen, and then we throw these guys into the bag. The yellow player grabs this pink worker here, and they are going to build a factory. They've decided they want to grab this factory over here, which has no bonus, but you only need three coal in order to activate it instead of the usual four. So that's going to cost them $6,000, like always. And then they need to show they have six technology. Well, they have four plus two. And now they can flip this over, and they can make uh, pocket watches. It's back to us. We only have 2,000 yen. We've got a black worker and yellow workers, but we have a ton of stuff down here. We can use this to influence Japan. Uh, we also can keep in mind these uh, foreign export contracts that will keep our income going, although the game is nearing the late stages, so we're not going to be hitting that income that many more times. However, you'll notice these down here, they just give you victory points, so that's not too bad. You know, since there is a black worker on this Influence Japan spot, I think we should go ahead and take advantage of this. And we have a couple things we could do considering how much coal we have right now. Uh, we have, with three light bulbs, you can get rid of all three of those to drop a seven down, and no one can ever kick a seven out, which is kind of nice. We can actually kick our own tiles out to get access to them again, which I think we'll probably be looking to do. And then we've got three of the paper and three of the, um, the textiles down here. We have these two threes over here, and you, you need to discard three of these to drop a three. So we're definitely wanting to get this influence down on the board. Uh, let's see what the good options are. And right now, the only region we're not in is this one over here, which we could definitely do quite a bit. We could uh, throw a six down here and a five over there for discarding three light bulbs. And we can even kick out this yellow so that yellow wouldn't be in this region at all. Uh, if we did that, we would get uh, two or three of these uh, blueprint bonuses, which would be good. It would allow us to have the blueprints in order to build um, another one of these uh, big buildings, probably the stopwatch over there. Uh, but another option is over here, and this is pretty nice because you get money every time you go here, and money is good at doing other things. Uh, we could put uh, a 6 or a 7 on this spot, kicking out this 5, so that we could use that 5 somewhere else, uh, which is a pretty nice thing because a single light bulb lets us drop down to 5 and get bonuses and whatnot. And we could also put a 3 of paper over here, which would weaken red, and that would be two different spots. We would get 10,000 yen, which we could do a bunch of stuff with. We could buy two trains with that, and right now we get five points at the end of the game for every additional train we do. So that seems like a pretty good turn. I think let's go ahead and do it. So the three paper goes over here, which allows us to put our three influence down, and we will bump out this two right there. And then we will spend all three of our light bulbs, which are our third level, which lets us put one of our two seven influences down, which is a pretty big deal. We're going to put it right here, which actually bumps one of our own tokens. And this is great for a couple reasons. The first is that this is the only light bulb in the region, and you can never bump a seven out. So I've kind of locked this position down with a really solid amount, because 
Even right now, we have uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 14 influence, and red still has 10, so it's quite close. And we now have access to put this 5 somewhere else on the board relatively easily for only a single light bulb. Since we placed in two different spots, we get 5,000 times 2, or 10,000 yen as a bonus. The red player decides they're going to grab this blue worker here, and they're going to build a building. Looking out at all these options, they decide to grab this one, which immediately lets them put two trains down on the board. So that requires six technology. They are at two. They can discard both of these blueprints in order to do that. They flip it over, and now they have to spend the 6,000 yen to build the factory. The yellow player grabs this red worker here so that they can run their factories, and then these guys slide over. They've got eight coal to play with, and right off the bat, they're going to spend three of it on this stopwatch factory here. They're going to spend three more on this lens factory, and the last two on this textile factory. So the lens factory, I'm sorry, the stopwatch factory only makes them a single good. The lens factory here is going to make them two goods because of the plus one, and then over here at the textiles, they're going to make three goods. It's back to us. We've still got yellow and black workers only. And we've already reached the third emperor uh, reward track, so there's no real reason to go more, except for the fact that we're going to lose all this money when we consolidate. So let's go ahead and try and spend it. We have 12000 here, and let's see what we can do with it. And looking out at our options, we essentially have this one over here and this one over here. This is not going to let us spend 12,000 yen very well. This one does. I already mentioned it's a really good plan for us to build trains because each new train that we build is going to get us a start. Well, I'll show you that in a minute. Let's just go ahead and activate this. We're going to take this yellow worker here to build trains. So we put this here and we're going to spend the 10,000 yen in order to build two trains. And as you can see, after you build your third train, every future train gives you access to a star. And earlier on, we put a 5x down on trains. So taking both of these is actually a 10 point bonus for the end of the game, which is definitely a big deal. And these are a relatively cheap way to bump up your influence in these regions. These have to go into two different regions, and right off the bat, I think we should go into this money region here. Uh, first of all, you may notice that there are eight slots, but in a three-player game, two of these slots are not uh, a spot that you can put. There's only So there's only one more spot space there, and this is going to be a pretty tight little thing. We know that the red player has now has the option of building these watches, so they're definitely going to stay viable in competing with us. In fact, there's two watch spots and only one of these light bulb spots. So let's go ahead and throw that down there and see if we can fend them off a little bit. And then this other one, well, we could put that, where should we put this one? We definitely don't want to put it over here because we have that in quite a good position. There are no stopwatches over there, so we know Red can't swoop in real quick with a third tier thing and take that away from us. We could go over here. We have a very tenuous grasp on this region, but we know that we can come in here and do some much better things with it, and that would actually give us two trains, which is a very good thing as far as taking stuff over. But then over here, we notice that we could put two light bulbs down. And I think we already have a 5 and a 6 as options to plunk down. Uh, getting more blueprints is not something we desperately need, but doing a big jump in a region is a big deal, especially if you can take first place, because it's going to be worth 20 points in the final scoring of the game. So putting a train down over there could definitely be helpful. We want to be in all four of the regions anyway, because we get 5 points per region that we're in at the end of the game, so we definitely don't want to ignore this region. So let's go ahead and put this over here and see how that runs for us. The red player decides to grab a blue worker, and they're going to influence Japan. They're going to put that guy here, and they're going to spend all three of their bentos. Three bentos allows them to get to the five influence marker over here, and they're actually going to put it over here in the only bento spot in the coal region and bump themselves out, which is going to make them stronger in the region, but more importantly, it's going to give them two coal, which they need. The yellow player decides to grab one of these pink workers, and they're going to bump up their coal track. They're going to put this guy here, spend 1,000. That will get them one bump up, but this building over here gives them an additional bump. It's back to us. We've got 2,000 left over. Um, I really don't think it makes sense for us to keep going. We really want to consolidate, get a bunch of money, and get some coal, and keep this thing going. So I think let's go ahead and stop. We're going to lose both of these 1,000 yen tokens, unfortunately. Uh, but then we're going to get four coal. And then we'll get 19 plus 2, or 21,000 yen. And let's go ahead and grab a bonus. We can see that we get up to four, but there are none of those. Now, there's just the two and the three, and without warping over there, I can just tell you there's a blueprint option and there is a coal option. I think we want coal. We only have four coal. We could definitely use more, and we don't really feel the need to build more factories at this point. So we'll go ahead and grab it. It comes with two more coal, so we're at six total for the next round. And then we've got this 3x that we can throw down on something. Well, we've already, we're have already we getting really close to being able to build some more boats. And if we put it here, we would get some pretty good points for that. We have done two contracts already, so this has been fulfilled once. Our coal track, well, we've already done that. Our science track 
is at one. That's not too great. Uh, and this is just bad because it gives us points for every second and third level building we do. And we've only done one third level building, so that does not make any sense. This is a modifier. It just lets you divide the excess money you have at the end of the game by six, and you get one point for each of those. Let's go ahead and put it on contracts. We already have one of them done. At the end of the game, we'll likely have some excess of these really cheap and easy to make um, resources to slam out a couple of these, we'll get victory points for it, and then we'll get more victory points for it. So that works pretty well. Now we gotta pay for our workers. We had two colors, so it's gonna cost us 6,000 yen. And then we'll take all the workers, and we're gonna throw them into the bag. The red player decides to grab this blue guy and activate their factories. They'll put this guy down here. They've got seven coal to play with. They're gonna use four of it, making this stopwatch here, and they're gonna use the other three doing lenses. So they make three lenses with that action, and then they make a single stopwatch. The yellow player decides they want to consolidate, so they're going to lose this 1,000 yen, then they're going to gain 7 coal, and next up they'll get 20,000 yen. They've got Emperor's Rewards up to the 4 level, but there are no more 4, so they're going to grab a 3, and that'll be the last coal bonus for the 3x, so they'll get 2 more coal, bringing them up to 9, and then they're going to put this 3x down on their board. And they're going to put it right down there, so they'll get 3 points for every 2nd and 3rd level building they have at the end of the game. Right now they have 3. Then they have to pay for their workers. They've got three of them, so that's going to cost them 9,000 yen. And all the workers go away. It's back to us, and we've got six coal, which is actually perfect for operating two of these factories. And this one's already full, so we don't really care about running that one. I think let's just go ahead and do that right from the start to give ourselves options for doing contracts or influencing the board, that kind of stuff. We could go with a white or a black. There's only one of the black on the board, and there is a white over here with boats, and we are interested in putting some boats down uh, that does make sense. So let's go ahead and grab this white worker and then we'll fire up those factories. We've got six coal, so four of it will go into our light bulbs and two will go over here into paper. We will actually get three paper for that and we will get three light bulbs. It's Red's turn and after lots of thinking they decide they are going to consolidate. It does mean they're going to lose 5,000 yen, which seems like a lot, and it seems a little bit early, but they're all the same color here. They could pull a blue over here and influence the board to get a couple couple of victory points, but that's just kind of stalling. There's not going to be that many more turns to the game. They want to get a big income and get some more coal and keep things going. So it's worth it to them to lose all five of this money. It, it, it's a pretty big uh, sacrifice, but they think it'll pan out. Uh, then they're going to get five coal and 17,000 yen. Then they're going to go ahead and grab an Emperor's Favor of the two level, and they're actually going to grab this one right here. This is the other reason. Um, this is the last money-giving tile on the board, and it was only at the two level. There's no reason to go to the three level to grab it. So they're going to get an extra 5,000 yen for taking this. They're going to flip it over and add a 2x to one of their spots on the board. And they decide to throw it down here, so they'll get two points at the end of the game for every second and third level building, which they have three of right now. Finally, they discard their workers. They only had one color, so it's only going to cost them 3,000 yen. And that ends their turn. The yellow player grabs this pink worker here. They are going to be upgrading some machinery, and then these are going to slide on over. They're going to spend 10,000 yen to do a double upgrade. They'll just take a two. They'll throw it right down there onto their stopwatch factory. All right, back to us. We've got 15,000 yen, one white worker grabbed, and a bunch of resources. Uh, the first thing is I noticed there is a white worker up on the build a boat spot, and 15,000 yen is exactly what we'd need to build three boats. Uh, if we got all three of those into regions that we got second or first place in, that would be really great because that would be six potential points there. Uh, but it could be more if we were able to grab the last 3x modifier and put it down here. Then that would be uh, three times three or nine more points. So spending 15,000 um, yen to get 15-ish uh, points in a best case scenario is not too terribly bad. But other options are available to us. We could uh, start influencing the board and plunking these down and getting all sorts of stuff. We can get money or coal or blueprints or just straight up victory points for doing that. We'll take a look at the board and see if that makes sense. And lastly, there are these contracts, but I think we'll take a look at those when we are farther along in our turn looking for some interesting things to do with what we have left. When we look at our board position, we're in pretty good spots in both of these regions over here. Not necessarily going to win this region yet. We need to keep an eye on it. But over here, we are super weak. We've got a one, and we've got nothing over there. Now, we have a pretty cool thing we could do over here. We could put, we could get rid of our three light bulbs to put uh, two of those turns into a six, and one turns into a five influence, as you can see over here on the track. We could put a six and a five down on these two light bulbs, which would be an 11 point swing right there. And in fact, we could spend three of our textiles, kick this out, and put a three down there. So we would go from having nothing to having 14 plus two or 16 influence, and we'd be just dominating this region. We would get three blueprints, which would mean we could uh, definitely build one more factory if we wanted to, although I'm not sure how much 
uh, since that actually makes. On the other hand, we can go to this coal region right here. Unfortunately, there are no light bulbs, so we couldn't put any of those down, which is a bit of a bummer. But we do have um, a bunch of our textiles, so we could kick out uh, this one right here and put a three there. And then we also could, well, that's actually all we could do <laughs> in that region. It would end up getting us um, two coal, which we could use to keep stoking up the factories, but I think that's not really worth it. We're not going to be able to get rid of enough um, cubes to make getting more coal to fire the factories this round make sense. So let's go ahead and influence this region a whole bunch. So right off the bat, we'll spend two of our light bulbs, which will let us put a six down on the board, and we'll go ahead and put that right there. And then we'll spend our last light bulb, which lets us put our five down on the board, and so we can put that down over there. So already we're doing a really good job here. And I figure while we're here, we may as well, well, let's take a look and see if it makes sense to actually kick this person out. We certainly don't need that third blueprint bonus for placing over there, and in future turns, we can potentially throw our textiles down over here, which would get us extra fishery points and make this region a little more solid. So let's go ahead and hold off on the textile placement. So we're solidly winning this right now with 13 influence, and we'll take our four blueprints, and that's going to finish our turn. And of course, I can't forget to actually take the blue worker, which let me put down all those influence. And that opens up this slot for these guys to slide in, which means we will shift into the final three rounds of the game as soon as one more of these slots opens up. It's now the yellow player's turn, and they decided to grab this guy right here to activate their factories. But also, they know that at the end of the turn, this is going to shift over, which means that the game will actually end at the end of their turn. So they'll have the final say in putting influence down on the board, so it's a pretty great move. And they've got nine coal to play with, which is enough to actually activate uh, all three of their non-level one factories. So that goes there, that goes there, that goes there. They get uh, two bento boxes for doing that. They're going to get two lenses for their lens factory. And finally, they're actually going to build three stopwatches right over there. The turn is over, they can't replenish this, so we move this disc over and we have now in the, entered the end game where each player is going to get exactly three more turns, but we're still going to refill this display and refill this for those last three turns of the game. Alright, so it's our turn and we're a little bummed that both the other players are going to get to act after us in the final round of the game, but that's how it shook out. So we need to think about what we can accomplish in three turns. Uh, first of all, well, we've got this 15,000 yen right here. We can just go ahead and drop three boats down. In fact, that probably does make sense, especially if we hope to put a modifier down um, on this spot. So maybe we can build a boat and then consolidate on our next turn so the final round of the game, we will have a bunch of, uh, well, that's actually not that amazing, right? We'll have a bunch of coal and we'll have a bunch of money um, but we won't actually have that much stuff over here. It almost feels like we should consolidate now so that on the next turn we can spend all that coal getting a bunch more light bulbs and this kind of stuff here so that the final turn of the game we can do a big influence. It's a bit of a bummer where we can only do one of those two things. We essentially, we're going to produce on our factories one more time or we could build some boats. But the other thing to keep in mind is we only have these two last influence uh, tiles over here anymore. We could put the seven down if we get three influence, uh, uh, three uh, light bulbs, but we've already got a pretty good setting on all the light bulbs on the board because nobody else actually built light bulbs, so nobody's been competing for us for it. So that's not actually that amazing. And then this three, well, we could put that three down with either of these chunks already. Now it's somewhat likely that we're going to have tiles get bumped off and put back into our zone, but it's probably going to be these weak level tiles and not necessarily a strong tile that a light bulb would be able to cover up. So I think let's go ahead and not do the consolidate right now turn. Let's go ahead and build the boats and see how that goes. So let's grab this white worker here. We'll put him down there. We'll spend our 15,000 yen in order to put three boats out on the board, which is going to bump up our income by three, but that probably won't really have any effect on the game at this point. We have to put these down in different regions, and we can already see that this region we are super weak in, so let's definitely not put a boat there. We'll go ahead and put a boat over here. We'll put a boat over here, which actually locks down all of these upgrades. Nobody else can squeeze in there, so that's good for us because we got the two trains in, so red can't sneak in there with a train. And then we'll throw another boat over there. The red player decides to grab this white worker here so that they can produce in their factories. They'll put this guy down here, and they're only going to use four out of their five coal in order to fire up this uh, stopwatch factory, uh, or sorry, uh, pocket watch factory, and then that will make three of them. The yellow player grabs this black worker here, and they are going to influence Japan. 
they're going to go ahead and take two pocket watches and then another pocket watch in order to place a six and then place a five. So we're going to put this one down here and then we're going to put this one here and actually there is a rule I haven't mentioned this whole way through in a three player game you can only ever have three influence tiles around a spot in, a, in the region. So there are four here but that's okay as long as I put this in here and it's larger than any of one of the other ones that's fine it's going to kick this one out. And with those placements, yellow is now at 11. We are at 11, so we both tie for first place. And since it's the end of the yellow player's turn, we push this forward. It's back to us, and we have exactly two turns left. So we know that we do want to consolidate so that we can put a uh, multiplier down here to take advantage of these boats that we've already put down on the board. But I think one thing we do want to do is let's go ahead and do a contract because we have four of these textiles here, and that's a seven-point um, advantage right there. I think that's definitely the best thing we can do as far as squeezing victory points out. So let's grab this white guy here in order to fulfill the contracts. And then we'll put him here. We'll spend our four textiles in order to flip this over. That is four of one kind, as you can see. And then we'll immediately grab seven points. We were at 55, and we're now tied with red at 62. The red player grabs this white worker in order to influence Japan. And they decide to spend two of their pocket watches in order to place a six, and they're going to spend a single one of their lenses in order to place this two. They could place the three, but they have other ideas for this three. So the six will go down here, and the two is going to go up here, which now gives them the lead in this area because they have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and right now we have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we're two behind. The yellow player decides it actually makes sense for them to consolidate at this point. So they're going to spend their 1,000 yen. They don't get to use it. They're going to immediately get 7 uh, coal from the bank, which they will likely not be using uh, for the rest of the game. Then they're going to get 20,000 yen from the bank. And they have to, oh, they get a emperor's bonus. Uh, at this point, it doesn't really matter whether it's coal or blueprints. So they'll go ahead and take a coal one for 2 extra coal. And they're going to put this 2x down onto one of their things makes the most sense to put it right down here so they get two points for every six money they have at the end of the game and then they're going to spend 6,000 yen because they have two different color people and that will end their turn. We slide the token forward showing that everybody has one more turn. For our final action I think we want to get this guy out onto the board for these three paper and for our last action of the game we're going to consolidate so we immediately get four coal from the bank although that does not matter. <laughs> then we get 22 plus 2 uh, money, so that's 24,000 uh, yen. Next up, we get to do an Emperor's Bonus, and we made it to the third level. And we'll take the last third level one, which lets us get another blueprint, which we won't use. We'll spin this over, and we're going to plunk this down onto our boat spot. So that right there is a nine-point action. Lastly, we have to pay for our two colored workers, so that is going to be 6,000 yen. And then we'll go ahead and throw these guys into the bag, and that ends our final turn of the game. For Red's last action of the game, they're going to grab this pink worker and they're going to build some boats. So they'll put this guy down and they're going to spend 15,000 yen to build three boats. So all these three guys come up and each one of these boats is actually worth two points because of this modifier down here. And these have to go into different regions. They can't go into this region because it's full, which means they're forced to go in the three other regions, which actually means that two of those regions, they don't have a chance of actually getting the bonus points for the boat but it's worth it in order to get the modifier to just have the boats out on the board for the red player. And for the last action of the game, the yellow player will grab a yellow worker and fulfill contracts. You can fulfill up to three for one action. So the first one they're going to do is this monster right here for 12 points. So they'll get rid of two of this, they'll get rid of two of this, and then one of the other two for 12 points. And the other one they'll do is this one right here. That will cost two of this, and one of this, and one of this. So they're able to liquidate their supply. They go up twice on the income track, not that it matters, and they get 17 points. And that brings them up to 72. And with that, the game is over, and we're going to do one final scoring, and then we'll do all of our own personal uh, end game victory point modifiers. As you can see for the final scoring, you get 20 points for first place, 15 for second, and 11 for third. So this region, we still are first place, so we get 20. Plus we have two boats in it, so we actually get 24 points for winning this region. And the yellow player with four influence is still tied with the foreign imports, which is kind of funny. So that means they're going to have 15 plus 11 or 26. You divide that by two, the yellow gets 13 points. So 24 points puts us at 86 points, and 13 points puts yellow at 85. Now we come to the money region where red was able to edge us out with their 18 influence to our 16. So they get 20 plus 2 for their boat. 
and then we are in second place, so we get 15 plus uh, 4, because we have two boats, so we get 19 points. So 22 puts red at 84, and 19 points puts us at 105. In the coal region, yellow has seven influence and red also has seven influence because of their train. So they both split the first and second point pots. And unfortunately, we came in fourth place um, because we have three influence and the foreign imports still have four. So what that means is that red and yellow are going to split 35 points in half and they're going to round down, which ends up being 17 for each. But red gets a bonus of four because of their boats. So 21 points puts red at 105, just like me, and 17 puts yellow at 102. And finally, in the blueprint region, yellow has 13 influence, and so do we because of our railroad over there. And the red per player comes in third place because they just barely beat the foreign imports. So that means yellow and us as purple also both get 17 points. However, we do have one boat, so we're going to get 19 points. And then red will get 11 points, but they won't score for their boat because they didn't score in the first or second slot. This puts yellow at 119. We go all the way to 124 and red is at 116. There's only an eight point spread between us, but now let's do the final scoring for all our modifiers on our player boards. So firstly, we get one point for every six money that we have. We have 18 money, which means we're gonna get three points for this. Next up, we get three points for every boat uh, with a star we got to. We have three of those, so three times three, or nine points there. We're gonna get five points for star per star that we uh, unlocked with the train. There are three of those, so that's a 15 point jump. We're going to get five points per region on the board that we have at least one influence tile in, and we were able to get in all of those, so that's going to be 20 points. Over here, we're going to get five points each for factories that have a plus two machinery on them, which is three, so that's 15 times three, or 15 points. We'll get no points for this because we didn't put any tokens down on it. We have a 4x modifier for the coal track. I think we thought we were going to go a lot higher on the coal track. We only have a single star here, so that's four points. We have one point for uh, every star on the technology track, which is only one, so that's one point. And finally, we get three points for every pair of contracts we were able to do. Well, we only did three contracts, so that is going to be worth three points. And all combined, that's 70 bonus points. We were at 124. This brings us all the way to 194. The red player only has 4,000 yen remaining, so they get nothing for this. They get two points for a boat with a star unlocked, so that's two times three or six points. They get no points for trains. They get four points per region that they're in at the end of the game, and they're only in three regions, so that's only 12 points. Over here, they get three points per factory with a plus two on it, so that's three times three, or nine points. They get two points for each second or third level factory they've built, which is three of them, so that's six points. They get four points per star on the coal track, and again, they were only able to get one as well, so that's four points. They get one point for each star on tech track. They didn't even get to the first star. And finally, they get four points per pair of contracts they were able to complete, and they only did one. Uh, oops, I think I probably should have paid a little more attention to that, but that is everything they were able to get for endgame points. And that comes out to only 34 points, which is going to bring red over here to 150 points. And finally, we have the yellow player. They get two points for every uh, six money they have. They have 14 at the end, so you divide that by two. That's going to be four points. They get nothing for boats or ships because they didn't build any of them. They get five points per region that they are in at the end of the game. They are in three of the four regions, so that's going to be 15 points. They get four points for a factory that have a plus two on it. That's only two of them, so um, four times two, that's going to be eight. They get three points per uh, second or third level uh, factory. They have three of those, so that's going to be nine points. They get five points for their coal stars. They were one away from another one. That's a pretty big deal. They only have two stars, so two times five, that's ten points. Uh, they get one point per star on their tech track. They got two points for that. Then they get three points per pair of contracts they were able to complete. Well, they did one, two, three, four, five contracts. So that's two pairs. So um, two times three, that's six more points. That ends up being a total of 57 bonus points, which is going to bring the yellow player all the way over to 176. And there you have it. That was a complete three-player game of Nippon. Obviously, it didn't end up being too terribly close. I did the best I could to keep everybody making smart decisions, but I think near the end there, I focused a little bit too much on my endgame points and didn't notice that Red, in particular, was not fulfilling theirs as much as they could. But I hope that gives you a good idea as to how the whole game plays, and I really hope you've enjoyed it. Since this is a playthrough video, I won't be doing any review for the game at this point, but if I do review in the future, you can click a link somewhere on the screen or down in the description below to go ahead and watch that. If you'd like to see more full game playthroughs like this one, as well as in-depth board game reviews and vlogs, please subscribe to my channel. You can also directly support it at patreon.com slash Thanks for watching.